Okay, let's uh, have a chat with David Mapley now. Let's give him a nice big round of applause and bring him onto the screen. Hola, bon dia. David, good morning to you. Bon dia, Carl. Good to meet you. Not, we've not met before. Indeed not. Of course, when you sent me a message, um, I'm a fraud investigator. Well, actually, can I ask that you don't do that to people? That was your first sentence when writing to them, I'm a fraud investigator. Um, my heart skipped a beat. Not that I've got anything to worry about, but when you see that as the first bit of a communication, um, it got my attention. It got my attention. And okay, that's what, right. that's what you do down there in the Algarve. Tell us more about yourself. Well, I, I've been based down here now for almost two years. I was involved in a very messy investment fund in Luxembourg for about three years, where 100 million euros had been taken from a lot of uh, retirees, pensioners, and it was very much uh, me against all the banks and the system. And uh, now with 40 lawsuits working their way through the courts in Luxembourg, I decided I needed some sunshine and a breather and a break. And... Uh, Yes. Uh, some fresh air, shall we say. So here I am, uh, surrounded well, by almond blossom and uh, no smells. Although I, I've been in, I've been investigating sherry for a week down in uh, Andalusia. So I think my, my, my nose is probably a bit uh, skewed right now. But uh, ah, it's lovely being back here. And it's a, a glorious time of year with yellow clover flowers and the almond blossoms and the sunshine. So... Oh, it sounds lovely. Okay, so there you are, uh, firmly established now in the Algarve. So on this yeah. Luxembourg thing, were you one of the people who who was a, as it were, a victim of this crime, and that's why you got involved, or did you did you get into it in a different way? No, I uh, was approached by a, a, a client in in Switzerland, actually a nuclear physicist, and he'd lost money. Um, he should have stuck to atoms, to be honest, rather than the way he was investing, yeah. but. Uh, one client led to the next, and suddenly there's a whole group of uh, Swiss uh, expats, literally people flying in on a on a Monday morning from London, going through a Rolodex of who works at the UN or uh, World Health Organization or Procter and Gamble, and uh, all provided with advice on their pensions. And a lot of them went into what seemed like a, a regulated, well audited, big bank named investment fund in Luxembourg. And it did very well for three years and then went to zero in one month. Wow. wow. Surprise, surprise, the money had gone. Yes. So I, I, I was elected by the shareholders to go up to Luxembourg. I, I was based in Switzerland at the time and commuting between uh, USA and Switzerland and went up there and uh, uncovered a right old mess. Sounds like it. Sounds like it. So mm. how did how do they – I mean, did they look you up in the phone book or the internet? How, how do they – how does a, sh a group of shareholders um, appoint a fraud investigator? How did they find you in the first place? Well, I write articles uh, regularly about how to avoid losing money. And frankly, it's much easier to avoid losing it than to get it back when it's been stolen. I'm sure. Um, so you know, I just try and make my life easier and uh, tell people what to avoid, uh, make derogatory comments about Bitcoin, although my three sons will kill me because they'll work in that industry. But uh, we'll come back you know, to that. Think, we'll come back to that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well. Yeah. Yeah. So. So you know. Uh, uh, I think I've been in finance all my almost all my life. Ten years with a proper job in a suit in investment banking, mainly in Asia, Japan, and then uh, Australia and uh, what have you. And then I spent twenty odd years investing in Russia and emerging Europe. So I saw all kinds of stuff. Like, okay. really <laughs> yeah and uh you know i sort of then got out of that business as putin got got a bit nasty in 2014 and sort of retired in switzerland and sort of just dabbled around and bit by bit people would come to me and said oh i invested in this company and i lost all my money any idea what i should do and um the sad reflection is that when this sort of thing goes wrong you reach out to your local lawyer and he'll say Mm, okay, pay me 10 grand and let me figure out what's going on. So you're basically paying for his education. So 10 grand later, he says, <laughs> yeah, I'm sort of thinking about this. Pay me some more money and maybe, you know, oh, it's cross-border. Oh, I have to get my uh, my cousin in XYZ country to get involved too. And then, then we go to the police who say, hmm, you've lost all this money. You could afford to lose the money. So really, you know, you're not a granny getting your handbag snatched. Mm -hmm. You know, you're... 
rich and you can afford this sort of stuff. So we'll put it on the back burner. And long and short, people spend uh, a long time potentially seeing their pension or the retirement just disappearing out the door. And it's very hard to recover that money. Yeah. People, you know, need to understand that often when you have deliberate fraud, the crooks have spent a couple of years planning what to do and how to disguise the money through Bitcoin into Dubai real estate. I mean, all the sort of things that I see make it almost impossible for your local cop shop to really uh, do anything about it. And by the time it comes to the, the public minister or the public prosecutor, they go like, we have no chance of recovering this. The guy's yeah. done a runner. He's got three different passports. Botoxed his face up. We don't know who he is, where he is. Oh, you know, sorry. <laughs> And oh, you've yeah, paid, yeah. you've paid for that Botox, and I can imagine. I mean, it's not it's not a seventies detective show, is it? Uh, when you go into the GNR and say, "I think I've lost whatever," you know, th these many millions. I imagine the GNR aren't leaping; they're not running to the back room and saying, "Come on, guys, we've got a fantastic case today." Their their hearts oh. must sink, mustn't they? When they when they hear this and think, "Oh, here we go. Here's another oh. one. Um, how 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 are we going to file this?" Um, can you give us some sense of if it's getting better or worse generally um, and the scale of it? Well, uh, I think Portugal's a little unique because you have uh, political instability in the States driving a lot of people to reach for a, an airline ticket and passport and saying, we're out of here. We can't handle another four years of, of good old Donald. Uh, and uh, the dollar has been strong. Uh, so people like, I can really afford uh, decent real estate in, in Portugal. Uh, the lifestyle is, is excellent. The cost of living is much cheaper. And as I found with my own house in the States, I mean, the, the property taxes and utility bills were th going through the roof. Mm -hmm. uh, five to 10 times what they are in Portugal. So it's a very attractive proposition uh, for, for people from the States. I think uh, Portuguese law is starting to become a little bit more accommodating to the Brits again about driving licenses and whatever. So they're trying to bring back the, the British investors in their, in their, in their droves. Uh, so people are buying property here. And Portuguese is, despite all the howling, it's not really an international language. I mean, you know, we all do a bit of French and German at school growing up in Britain. But Portuguese is a toughie. And I've been hammering away for two years. I'm writing to police and judges in Portuguese with the help of some translation software. But the minute I speak, I can't understand a damn word of what's said back to me. So, you know, it's tough. So people rely more on what they believe is a robust legal system to buy the property. And they believe that the realtors, especially with foreign names or foreign franchises, will do a decent job. And uh, that can be fraught with problems. And some unique problems, which I myself suffered from and encountered when I moved here. And uh, I started, in a sense, putting out social media comments about, guys, watch out for this sort of thing or watch out for that. And because you really are seen as a, a, a moving target to a, an economy that, that's not particularly wealthy. There's a bit of envy and jealousy uh, and also in a sense of we're getting overcrowded with the damn foreigners don't speak our language down here in the Algarve in particular. But you see in Porto and Lisbon, the morning chorus of, uh, of suitcases being dragged across cobblestones as people looking for their Airbnb or leaving. I mean, yes, you know, well put, it's a, well put. A nice bit of poetry there. Yeah, but that yeah, absolutely it's nails it. It's a whole swarm, isn't it? They're all like, duck, 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 duck. everyone's yes, running around yes. looking for that place. Yeah. So you know, the real estate issue in Portugal has made it less and less affordable to people who grow up here. And uh, that that's, that's that's tough. I can understand what that's like for people with seeing that. And um, you have a judicial system that literally, if you watch Portuguese news, it's four or five cases of, of serious fraud on the trot from football yeah. teams to ministers to airlines to God knows what, you know. So it's kind of like uh, a little it's bit cultural. endemic. Yeah, yeah, cultural. It, 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 yeah, well, yeah, yeah, the judicial system, I'd have to say, I've been in court, I've given uh, expert witness, and uh, the judge's rulings are intellectual, very sound and very good. I found that. Uh, I found generally with the police, they are 
responsive and they, they do follow up. But you need size 12 boots to get to that stage, if you get my drift. Yes, yes. And, yes. you know, and I've, I've had to plow my way through the, uh, the, the, the criminal code in Portugal. And, you know, when a public prosecutor says, well, this is simple theft. I said, well, actually, there's another 20 different breaches of criminal code involved here. So let's start waking up a bit and saying this is quite serious. Hmm. So um, what I found myself doing through trying to steer people clear of their problems is say, just be wary of the fact that what you take for granted elsewhere, and I've bought 11 homes in 11 countries all over the world, so I'm kind of au fait with buying a property, but what you take for granted elsewhere can't be taken for granted here. Mm. And uh, as much as I try and help people to avoid the problems, uh they exist and 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 when you get into a problem it's not easy to fix it you, if you've come here to retire and have a stress-free life in the sun and walk into suddenly finding you don't own your own home you can spend the next 10 years and legal fees and a lot of frustration and stress seeing your retirement uh, lifestyle and some of your retirement money disappear absolutely it, well that's a dream turning into a nightmare isn't it for sure and, and well, you it really is because of the work you're in, you're seeing this happen to people. So I'll take it then that we've got a perfect storm, if you like, of how this can happen in Portugal, as you've just um, laid out there. Um, you yep. know, the circumstances are, um, well, pointing in that direction potentially. Um, so we might think we could see it's getting worse. Just, I mean, not, not out of ill will necessarily, but just the volume of people means there might be more cases of this kind. Uh, sure. So there's, there's more of it. Um, and would is it safe to say then it's focused in on these um, areas where people are pouring in with their um, with their noisy luggage in the Algarve and in the capital and in Porto, wherever there's you know bigger and, and more foreign investment, this pitfall um, prevails and and it, uh, is occurring. So th there yeah. you are as somebody who can can be there to, to stop this happening. H how is that going? I mean, pr presumably people in this state of excitement and, and with the dream that you've talked about there are hot to buy, aren't they? They're not necessarily um, being the most thoughtful and uh, diligent. They're not doing their due diligence necessarily when they've fallen in love with a view, um, the smell of sour milk and olives come wafting in from north africa for example you know when, when you sherry. fall in love with, and sherry when you fall in love with these various things you're not thinking straight are you so that doesn't help either does it yeah well uh i don't think it's a case of not thinking straight i think it, it really is a case of um maybe local complacency mm -hmm. what you what you take for granted what you expect and then the reality of what happens okay yeah 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 I mean, oh, I found out with my own property, one of the three big problems I had was that my water meter was half a kilometre away from my house. <laughs> Do oh, you have yes. a very big house, a very big property? Uh, oh. uh, well, it's, 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 it's one third less than I, I was told I was buying. That's another story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I mean, my water meter was so far away, you can almost see it on a clear day. And between me... And my property and the water meter were pipes across the ground that were, you know, because of no legal agreements, everyone was free to enjoy at my expense. OK, so I get what you're saying. Um, you yeah. might assume, given your previous experience of buying homes and living elsewhere, that your water meter might be fairly close to your house. It's not a sort of question you're going to ask, is it? How far away is my water meter? And you well, found I've out actually, you found I've actually got a sewage uh, outlet uh, on the board of my property so you presume well that's where all the water takes place the, the metering as well as the sewage oh no the meter was in, in the next county shall we say you know and uh, uh yeah i mean i did, just didn't expect it my lawyer of course never bothered checking and uh, so next thing i know come the summer all the orchards around me are looking very healthy and rosy and my bill's going through the roof and i'm like i don't understand this until I right, yes, I, I've been I've been away drinking sherry for a week, and I'm still paying oh. for water for some reason. Yeah, um, it, okay, well, you caused some amusement here. A water meter distance made me lol. Um, and uh, this is a one of the this is the first lesson we can learn at uh, David's expense here is to maybe check where your water meter is. Pam's in Bondi from Pam, 
And uh, yeah, Pinky in as well this morning. Good morning to you, yeah. Pinky. Right. So, uh, oh, and the latest news on the smell. Um, the olive smell is not related to the North African winds. Somebody a little bit too hasty to blame North Africa for that. The source still to be found. It's going to be very embarrassing if Antonio F just has a pint of milk that's gone off in his own fridge whilst he's um, scaled it up to something that's blowing across the continents. OK, so, David, how how are people going to avoid this? Are you making some headway? Are you um, uh, managing to give people a bit of a heads up on some of these uh, pitfalls and problems? Uh, well, uh, yes, I am. But I'm about to cause a real headache for all of your viewers uh, simply oh, by... Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, well, no, I mean, uh, I, a, a recent case where a... Uh, a lady's husband passed away and uh, her husband was Portuguese. So the family rocked up and said, well, we, we deserve a, a stake in the estate, shall we say. And lo and behold, she was American. She'd been living here for 30 years and she found out that her house is not legal. Right. So okay. first, thing, first thing I'd say is, dear viewers, uh, for peace of mind, and it's better to be proactive than this than, a, than versus reactive i would uh, go to a, a trusted local lawyer and say can you just please do a check on my property that it's all legal i mean we went through covid i mean i lost family members like a lot of people and uh, it caused a lot of shocks and surprises to, to all of us in the world where we suddenly found ourselves in situations we didn't necessarily want to be in uh, if you own a property and you're suddenly in a position where you may have to sell there's nothing worse than suddenly realizing you could be facing three, four years of registration processes and just simple bureaucracy to render your house in a position where you could sell it when you believed all along that everything was I's dotted, T's I'm crossed. Sure. And yeah, legit. absolutely. Uh, which, again, is, comes goes back to uh, having your world based on assumptions rather than actually the facts. And you, yes. you, you blithely say there, go along to your local trusted lawyer. Now, that's not such a straightforward matter, is it? How do you know if they're trustworthy and <laughs> and can give you the information you're looking for, right. That's even if you've bothered to, to, to make sure of this fact? Well, the, uh, the defamation laws here are uh, strictly adhered to, shall we say. So you can't slag off the people that need to be slagged off, to be frank. Okay. Uh, word of mouth, I think, through... Uh, social media groups is useful in okay. terms of can anyone recommend a good lawyer uh, you know look at who's posting comments and uh, you can even follow up and say hey private message me so you dealt with this guy what was he like and I yeah. think that that helps that helps to avoid issues uh, I mean if you go into uh, any courthouse they have a whole hall of fame on the wall of lawyers being fined for mis misbehavior and you're talking about people who've ripped off properties and getting a 300 euro fine from the uh, bar association. I mean, it's a joke, right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, they I shouldn't be, you, they, in your opinion, they shouldn't be in business operating in that way, they but they should, they should not. not. They yeah. should not. I mean, it's, uh, you know, more cowboy outfits than you find in a US fancy dress shop. Well, hey! Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, uh, finding a trusted lawyer, although, um, it's not too difficult to walk into your own camera and say, can I see my property records? Okay. Now, I mean, when I, what I did with my house after I had found out I didn't own one third of my own land, yeah. I went to local Tavira Council. I went into the archives and pulled up my plot. And I realized within 30 seconds that uh, I indeed didn't own one third of the land I was told I, I bought. Yes. I, uh, so you can, you can go in and first of all, pull up your own records. I mean, if you, own but, property. David, how from, did that happen? How how did that happen? What 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 was the mechanism by which you were buying one thing, but it turns out you were buying something else? Uh, the sellers and the real estate and the lawyers were clearly working in concert, and they kept sending me the the, the, the plot diagrams. This is land you're buying with a yellow marquee pen around it, and that confirmed what they told me. And uh, yeah, before the promissory note, uh, before completion. Even afterwards, when I challenged them, saying there's some likely lads on my land grabbing some uh, carob trees or ca carobs, even my, even then the lawyer said, no, 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 this is the land you own. And I think the, the, the reality of it is that, that a lot of times the belief is 
we can sell you a, a dummy and it may take you five to 10 years to find out it's gone wrong. And then another five to 10 years to get it rectified, at which point I've gone off to Argentina in the sun or, you know, we're all dead or something. So <laughs> it's I only found out quickly because the, the car prices were high. Yes. Yeah. And uh, a couple of lads turned up with sticks, started whacking the trees, like, wait, you know, what are you doing on my land? Well, it's not yeah. your land. And, and I found it very quickly, within four months or so. So I was lucky. And yes. I found out, of course, the water meter because the summer bills went through the roof. And I uh, found out recently that my borehole is registered in the middle of my living room and not in the garden where it actually is. So, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh, but this is a catalogue of hilarious. I mean, if it's not you that's suffering from this, it's, it's I mean, it's oh, I'm hilarious. Stoic, I'm stoic about it, and I have the wherewithal <laughs> to fix it, and I got criminal complaints and having a go, you know? Yeah, but, good for uh, you. you. Maybe you'll tell us more about uh, how you go about that in, as, as our conversation unfolds as well. But that's bizarre. I mean, you effectively, then, you could be tackling people, uh, taking things from what you believe are your trees on your land, which actually isn't your land, as it turns out, after all. So after yep. you've wrestled them to the ground, <laughs> got in a scrap yeah, with yeah. Some people who, are, who aren't actually stealing from your land. And all the time they're using your water, not on your land, to grow their fruit potentially as well. So the, this is this that's that's a nice little vignette of what could possibly go wrong. Uh, and I'm oh, sure it's not at the worst end story. of things. Is it? Simple <laughs> story. Right. Okay. Uh, and... and uh, these are showcased, are they, on your Facebook? It's a group here, isn't it? Public group. Oh, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's so just what a picture. Is, of is this a catalogue of people's complaints and difficulties that, that they're facing in Portugal? Uh, yes, it is. Yeah, I mean, I'd say, I'd say <laughs> what you see there is uh, the tip of the iceberg. Uh, right. I've got some uh, pretty tough cases working with a, 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 a Porto-based uh, artist right now. Mm. whose uh, father passed away and she moved down to Algarve to uh, take over the inherited property. And literally a few days later, a um, local lawyer turned up and said, get out. This is owned by another chap, our client. And, uh, uh, you know, she was basically thrown out on the street of our own, own inherited property. Um, two, two years on, I mean, um, you know, we've gone into the, the records. We have the military coordinates of her house. And the military coordinates of the house of the uh, English chap who's tried to seize her property working in concert with the lawyers. And the poles apart, two and a half kilometers apart and irrefutable. Uh, but she's already lost in court. You know, the, the, the lawyers for the other side said she's deranged and violent. So they went to the court without her being invited in to defend her own position. They got a court judgment against her. And then, you know, turned up with the locksmiths and the GNR said, oi, out now. Good heavens. Uh, what a nightmare. What a, I mean, that's devastating, that that scale, isn't it, and level of, of uh, well, horror uh, for that particular person. Yeah, so let's, terrible. Let's, let's, let's shift, if we can, after we've taken a few more comments here. T-Duck's back. Bon dia, Algria Gumpers, just back home. Um, morning to you, T-Duck. Thanks for being here. Oh, and a question for you, David. Is there title insurance in Portugal? And if there is, is it worth having, David? Um, honestly, don't know. Okay, all right. And the real estate agents are not your friends if you're the buyer. Yes, again, check your assumptions. Uh, well worth double checking, triple, triple checking any assumptions you make in these processes where you are, where your home is at stake and uh, also the money you've used to buy it. So what sort of inroads are you making into this uh, culture and this horror, um, David? Because we were, we were talking yesterday about immigrant fatigue um, and how, to, in some some ways, you need to get used to the cultural difference in Portugal of how it's not Switzerland or, to some extent, what people are used to maybe in the US or the UK, where if something is done, it's done, isn't it? You know, you file your tax return, that should be it. The culture here of bureaucracy is ongoing, isn't it? I think Portuguese people expect to be just integrally linked to bureaucracy for all of their lives. And it's an ongoing kind of weeping sore of a thing that you just... 
you know, you mop up from time to time or cover it over, but it's essentially ongoing. It's, it's the culture we live in here, isn't it? That things just ne are never yes. really resolved. They just, you, you know, they're kind of better or worse, but they're never fully resolved. That's it. I's dotted, T's crossed. And it's the price you pay in a way for living in such a fabulous country for the reasons, you know, some of the reasons you gave oh, earlier on and all the reasons we like. So, but how, how to adjust to that? And what, and what are you doing for people who find themselves in these horrible situations? Uh, well, literally going through a checklist of questions. And right. so there, there, are, there are two elements. There's the people who buy the, the, the apartments, the condominiums uh, in the in the centre of cities uh, where there's not really land involved. And then there's the people who buy their dream home in the countryside or place with a garden and, uh, you know, where land is involved. So there's two elements to that. Um, when people buy... Uh, condominiums. I mean, I, I found cases where um, an expat in a nice apartment block found out that he is one of only a few expats in the block who are actually paying the condo fees and all the Portuguese are having a free ride. <laughs> right. Okay. Yes. So like, that's hey, a carefully crafted arrangement, isn't it? Let exactly. foreign yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, or you have, uh, you know, the, the water coming into your house is actually from the next door as well. And it was always a, uh, a, a, a an unspoken agreement in, in a couple of Portuguese neighbors were showing that water. But when Joe Bloggs turns up and uh, moves in next minute, he's got no water and he doesn't understand why. And then the neighbor says, no comprendo, like basically bugger off. So, yeah. oops, pardon me. So no, you're you have, you know, you have those sort of issues that go on or, you know, people's you know, olive trees growing over into next door's garden and that sort of thing. So uh, you, know, you have a problem in the inner city type of properties, but they're not so bad. It's when people buy a house with land and okay. then, you know, well, actually, where are the, the, the boundaries? I mean, there's a, there's a, it's stated in the law, you know, it's against the law to move the boundary markers. Right. Yeah. I mean, I've got uh, like, three out of about 15 you know <laughs> so, yeah. and and how do you prove that that the person you suspect actually move those boundary markers it's nigh on impossible you know yeah. uh, so when you get to land you have a lot more issues i mean is your house legal are those buildings uh, are those ruins legal that you want to buy and redevelop into your dream home um, yeah. is it just land that's registered as uh, as agricultural uh, and there's no urban dwelling license or habitation license whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are all the issues that people think they are by land and they're going to convert this this ruin into their dream home. And, you know, 10 years later, they're pulling their hair out and like, what what happened here? Yes, indeed. Indeed. But your first step in that process as, as by way of uh, putting these things right was to get yourself a decent uh, and, and well-respected, reputable lawyer locally who can ask such questions. But to, but to know the right questions to ask, because I think you've gone you've started to, to, to detail there. Yes. Is there anything else? Well, um, the fact that you can source a lot of the records yourself now just to check. I uh -huh. mean, whilst we we believe we've got the best lawyer in town and a word of word of mouth references is also very good. And I would also suggest that, that getting a local lawyer helps. I mean, I now have a, a very good lawyer uh, who uh, works for me and, and she's local from the same village as me. She knows right. everything and knows everyone. And uh, she looks at this building and that building. She knows whether it's legal, what it used to be used for, there's a pig farm or this and that. And that helps a lot. So I'm if sure. you if you come into Porto and say I'm going to buy a house in Castelo Branco, and uh, you know using a Porto lawyer, it may be great if you're sitting in a hotel in Porto and going in and out of the office, but you have no idea about the local stories going on with the land that you could be buying. Right, and, and so this 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 uh, advocate of yours, your lawyer, is truly your advocate locally yes. because they are known in the community. They should sure. be working for you because you're you're hiring them and having them do this work for you, and they have the interface with the community. So that sounds like a really good bit of advice. Uh, yeah, and if it goes wrong, I mean, the fact your lawyer rocks into court and the judges know the lawyer and the other lawyers know the lawyer, they yeah. realise they can't pull a fast one. You can imagine, you know, a well-heeled Rolex clad lawyer from Lisbon walking into a, a, a village court and trying to throw his weight around. They look at him like. Yeah, good luck. Sounds like a scene from a movie, doesn't it? Sounds like Heat of the Night or something like that. Okay, so um, 
Um, let's uh, go to a few more of the uh, questions and um, contributions here this morning. Uh, I I had a good realtor and have a mortgage. The bank won't finance a property with questionable ownership. That's quite a good um, uh, security, isn't it? If the bank are getting involved, they'll want to know that they're buying um, uh, not a lemon. Mm -hmm. Except that uh, another case we're working on as well, lawyers... Uh, see someone who's died and they conjure up a, a fictitious uh, plot plan and they go and register it with the local notary and get a new matrix number for that property. So they will coexist as an owner and wait maybe five years or 10 years. And if the property is not being used or it's a dispute amongst the children of an estate where they all squabble about who gets what. And someone will walk in one day and say, I've had this registered for 10 years. This is mine. Go away. Oh, so, okay. So, as in, as in, I mean, that's an old, an old thing, isn't it? The, the, the stuff of um, sort of dinner parties, isn't it? Did you know that if you make a claim on a, a piece of land, it's yours after seven or ten years? That can actually go on here as well. Uh, yeah, as well. Yeah. Okay. So, so you think you own the land, and you know, you give the records to the bank, and they say great, and they finance you. The next minute, someone else turns up, and says, "Well, I've owned this for twenty years, and I've been, you know, tending the lawns and stuff, and or." But yeah. wouldn't wouldn't the mortgage company or the bank fight that with you in that case if if that were to be the uh, eventuality? They would probably say you and your lawyer made the mistake, so we have recourse to you because you're an easy target. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thank you for that. Thank you, Aviva, for 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 making that contribution. Thanks for that, David. The renters paying the owners' condo fees is that typical? Asked Pinky. Mm, Not sure that's what you said. Is it? Down yeah. to the renters' contract, really. I mean. Uh, I mean, typically, if you rent an apartment, you expect to pay the utility bills. Yeah. But they may have a list of, you know, uh, condo fees, you name it. Uh, it yeah. depends on the contract. Now, down to the contract and the particular arrangement. I know if you're a renter here, you're not paying the council tax. Uh, that is the owner's responsibility. Unless, of course, it has been contracted back to you in some way. Right. Yeah. Which maybe some Portuguese landlords might be thinking is the thing to do now. You know, the, the foreigners are coming in, they're renting the thing, and, and they could perhaps ask, they could factor it in or ask you to pay it. But generally speaking, sure. it's the responsibility sure. of the owner, isn't it? Um, Bagandi is with us as well. Hola, bon dia, Malta. Great to see you in Coimbra on Saturday, uh, Bagandi. Back from a fantastic walk through the Bairada countryside this morning. Uh, Pinky thanking Antonio F., uh, who also responded to that question about uh, renters paying the condo fees. I've seen that in a few post rentals and wondered how common it was so there you go pinky getting a bit of value this morning uh, thanks for being with us david can you stay with us a bit longer because it's absolutely fascinating sure sure happy right. to. okay um so the other thing you mentioned earlier on was how things how long things take in the courts here now that's mm -hmm. that's quite a refuge for wrongdoers isn't it to, uh, to know yeah. that if you you're not going to take them to court because you're not going to see them again for five years when until that comes up in the waiting list because they're not employing people for the courts. The court people are not happy with the conditions. It's a very slow and bunged up process. Um, so what to do in this situation? Do you see that improving? Um, it's tough. The uh, I've had a few goes at the uh, legal profession here. I wrote, to the president, I wrote to the president of the Bar Association. He was at the uh, Foreign Press Club in Lisbon and saying, Oh, the judicial system is broken and, you know, nothing works. And uh, I wrote to him and said, well, I'm sorry, but actually my experience of the judicial system isn't isn't bad at all. The problem here are the lawyers. Right. I mean, I mean now, obviously, from my Luxembourg experience, I was working with lots of lawyers and in and out of court all the time and, you know, working with judges and uh, the, the judicial police, that sort of thing. And, uh, yeah, I got a good working relation with, with lawyers uh, in Luxembourg and Switzerland and Belgium and uh, Holland where the, the frauds were committed. What I'm, I find intriguing here is that you hire a lawyer and you almost have to beg to find out what is going on with your case. The idea of you actually reviewing the filing that goes into the court before it's actually done is, 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 is foreign. It's like, but I'm your lawyer. You know, why are you questioning me? Why do you want to read what I'm submitting on your behalf? I'm like, hello, you may not have the full story or you may have missed something. So mm -hmm. I, 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 I do have a, a lawyer now where I have a good working relationship and we'll go in and we'll throw breaches of criminal code at each other and say, does this work or that work? And can I see what you're putting in on my name? But a lot of people uh, either won't 
challenge the lawyer or just get told to pay the money and be quiet, sit in the corner. Cultural again, and, right? A cultural uh, matter. Yeah, I'm like, you know, you know, what's going on with my case? Oh, well, mm, uh, yeah. And oh, uh, come in, come come in, you know, next week and I'll charge you 150 euros and tell you uh, nothing's going on. Right. Yeah, so. And if, if they're used to working like that, they probably will continue to work like that, right? Who wouldn't? Yes, yeah. yeah. And I'm very tough. I say, look, I'm sorry. I, I don't intend to lower my standards in this professional industry. By, by coming to Portugal. This is how I work. I expect you to work that way. And I think it's important to find lawyers who understand that and respect that. Well, I imagine some of the younger ones might be quite excited by that proposition as well. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, understand I mean, you've got, what, 30% of the of the, the youth of Portugal graduating from college and getting out of Dodge, going off to Switzerland, Luxembourg, elsewhere. And uh, that's a very sad thing to see. Right. But the legal, legal profession, if you do a law degree here, you're locked into being in Portugal pretty much for the rest of your life as a lawyer. Oh, so okay. if you've not seen what goes on in like a New York law firm or a London law firm or anywhere else for that matter, you're kind of left to what goes on locally. And um, I'm sorry to say it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have the highest understanding of uh client relationship shall i put it and yes. uh and it's like, well i'm a lawyer you pay your money and you know, sit in the corner be quiet and yeah. you know, no it doesn't work you know you, i've had you know roll up sleeve sessions with lawyers all over the world and it you know you push and you learn and they learn from you and especially being a financial uh, specialist all my life mm. uh and you know i i had a big fight uh, i worked for the u.s uh, uh, government the senate uh, when the subprime crisis happened in 2008, 2009. And I'm working with the legal, the lawyers for the US government, who, you know, one day it's parking violations, next day it's collateralized mortgage obligations into a synthetic security. <laughs> and like, Let's go! <laughs> right. And, you know, and so I'm, I'm trying to work with them and, and sort of educate them and steer them the right way. Yeah. And uh, so it was very much, it was a two-way street. Yes. Yeah. Uh, here, it's kind of like, okay. Well, I've, so got, you, I've got to do a time out here, David. I've seen some distress going on in the comments here. And this does okay. happen. This is something that we do need to talk about uh, here in Portugal mm. from time to time. So Pinky's yeah. saying, whenever I manage to get over there, I'll be keeping my life as simple and stripped down as possible. I don't want any complications. Good God! <laughs> with an emoji there. And then Darren, the harbinger of doom, says, it's not going to happen. Believe me, I tried. Uh, Pinky... Just come for the weather and try to ignore the complications. Now, uh, Pinky, not entirely happy with that response. And why would they be? Um, we do have to get a sense of balance here. It's not necessarily going to happen. There is a cultural sort of disposition in which it could happen. And there are lots of other attenuating and balancing factors. Otherwise, David, you wouldn't be here talking to me from the Algarve, would you, with the smell of almond blossom in the air by the sound of it? So can we get a, some sense of perspective on this? You know, it, or reality, a reality check for Pinky. It is complicated, and I guess if it's a company, if it's a country you want to come to with no complications, it's probably not Portugal, right? And that's not anywhere either, is it? There's nowhere in the world without any complications when it comes to these matters. Well, Carl, I mean, I, I've lived in eleven countries. Yeah. I've seen you know, good and bad everywhere. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's fair to say that you know I'm close to retiring, and I choose to be in Portugal. I love it. Yes, here. there Thank you go, Pinky. Let that. And Darren, um, Darren's still here, despite. <laughs> <laughs> straight straight talking Yorkshireman there. It's it's not gonna happen, love. Believe me, I tried. It's bloody complicated in this country. But anyway, can get a nice cheap beer and a pie. Um oh, yeah. so um I'm Darren doesn't that probably doesn't speak like that. Maybe he does, but uh, my current lifestyle is relaxed and low-key. I'd like to keep it that way. Well, that's interesting. Um presumably parts of it pinky aren't, and that's the reason why you might be coming to Portugal. But it is about balance, and as um, Darren is saying. And as, as David is saying here, that it's still worth being here in Portugal, despite those things. And with the likes of David fighting for change, presumably, as well as to, to right wrongs, hopefully uh, the future will be somewhat rosier. Would you, would you agree, David? Do you think this is, is it going in the right direction despite all these problems? Um, well, it's interesting that uh, no one really seems to be doing what I'm doing. I'm uh, throwing out little snippets uh, on a regular basis that, that, you know, you wouldn't come to terms with if you're in Yorkshire. But, you know, the fact that my borehole, 
And let's face it, in Algarve, we have an issue with water, right, or what's left of the water. Yes. So people, people with boreholes are finding them more and more uh, in, important in their life. And, you know, you can go online and you can check whether your borehole is registered and uh, whether it's yours and yours alone. And uh, if not, you can apply for or talk to, you know, the, the, the authority that looks after it, the AP Ambienta. Yeah, these are little snippets that, you know, you can avoid problems by anticipating and checking. Well done. And so yeah. I'm putting these things out saying, like, you have, you have a borehole, is it registered? I mean, again, if you want to sell your property in three years' time, five years' time, whatever, you know, check it out now. Do It's kind of like, is this, is this house legal? Or if Absolutely. I need to sell it tomorrow because of COVID or family illness back in the UK or elsewhere, if I had to sell it, would I run into any issues? And if so, can I fix them and fix them easily? Well, I think there's that we need to write a guide here, don't we? The easy life in Portugal. There must be a way to navigate through these things. Um, and that's a book yet to be written. Louise, good morning to you. It's incredibly stressful, Carl. And a good morning to there. I know there are lots of people watching this morning, probably um, because of the subject matter and you being here, David, who we've not met yet. So if you are new and watching the show and you're here uh, to hear what David's saying, do say hello, as Louise has done here. I'm one of those people who is dealing with legal issues in a building where I own a condo in Berlin, in Lisbon. It has seriously made me question living. And I'm sorry to hear that. Um, Louise, lots of love to you. Um, it's always a pleasure talking to you ordinarily, Louise. And maybe you'll come back and tell us about uh, what happened with that, such that uh, others don't have to make a similar mistakes at some point. So good luck with that, um, Louise. I've still got to talk to you about Bitcoin. And because you're a finance guy um, and a world finance guy, what you think is going to be happening financially in the world uh, in the next little while, David? But is there anything more to say about um, buying in Portugal, avoiding the pitfalls? I think the message is very clear. Um, ask, don't don't make assumptions. Learn what the right questions are to ask in Portugal. David's a good source. Um, make, join the group uh, over there on Facebook, Algarve Real Estate Problems and Deceptions, um, and get professional help. Get decent professional help from people. You know, again, don't make the assumptions about the, about the process, the house, the plot, or anything like that. All the professionals you're going to work with, get some good ones, get some good word of mouth uh, recommendations. And, and this community, I think, is pretty good at finding those sorts of people. However, sure. when it comes to finding a local lawyer, you know, that's going to be word of mouth, intel on the ground sure. there. Anything, anything else we can share with, with people, David? Uh, no, actually, I mean, frankly, Carl, the sort of, sort of work that you do in the social media platform you, you present is very very useful in in helping share messages to people of you know the checks and balances in life because i think portugal does afford itself a wonderful lifestyle to people who come here especially uh those who are uh, coming down to retire and and, and chill out you know yeah. they, they've, they've worked hard they've saved their money they buy their dream home they come down here the last thing they need is 10 years of, of stress and hell and legal bills just to get back to where they were when they turned up here in the first place yeah. so i think you know simple simple information uh, snippets going out there just making sure people do ask the the most obvious questions but they're worth asking and yes, even and they, yeah. they can just check themselves go and get the local record and see what it says about their own home yeah yeah, yeah. Well, well said. Well said. Excellent stuff. OK. And hope, hopefully you'll join us again at, at some point as well. Um, do you know Paul That's Rees? Paul, Paul Rees was on. I, I'm really surprised I've never spoken to Paul before. And he was on the show uh, um, uh, in the last it's few terrible, weeks. He's terrible been, story. Well, he is. <laughs> or he's got yeah. one. Or well, he went through hell, the poor man. Oh, okay. And he's still here. Paul. He's still here as well, isn't he? He's still here. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. He he, he, he was. He, his life was was pretty much destroyed by what went on going against the council and, and they didn't care. And he won his case. So they just turn and they appeal it and kick the can down the road again and yeah. again and again. But he's still, so, he's yeah. still smiling and still living in Portugal. So top man, yep. Paul Reese, we're Lovely looking guy. to have Lovely the and, 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 and he's, 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 you know, I mean, if you want to live in the countryside in the area where he, he has his business, he at least is is, is trustworthy because he's seen it. He's been looking yeah, down yeah, the he's, Yeah, he's a good man. He, he, he we, we really enjoyed talking to him as we're enjoying talking to you today. I hope you can stay with us a bit longer. My recommendation yeah. is expect everything to take a day 
You can't expect to do multiple admin tasks in a day. And even with that one admin task, you can expect to go back three times, according to the Lord Gilchrist law of three as well here in <laughs> Portugal. Um, I believe I found a good law firm in Tamar. Uh, it's quite good, very responsive, good price and thorough. Good for you, Darren. Share the, the details on the Portugal Club platform with people then. Um, sure. Jeffrey yeah. Knight tuned in. Hi, Jeffrey. Good, great info. Thanks for this. Do you think, given what you said, renting is a good option for people coming to Portugal then? So you, you're taking less of a risk? Um, Carl, I think to just get off the plane uh, at one of the local airports, walk in into a house you bought, and I saw the case of the day, someone bought a house due through a video conferencing of, of a walkthrough, and now problems galore. I'd say uh, move, when you come to Portugal, unless you really got some good local knowledge, rent. Went for a year or so just to get a feel for life, uh, for especially if you're going to be looking for a home. Do it from being based down here. Don't necessarily just get off get off the plane and say, I bought this house. Uh, where are the keys? So yep. rent initially just to get up the learning curve, get a smattering of some port Portuguese, get to know what the administration could be like. Find out from local sites who the good lawyers are or the good realtors. So getting local knowledge, it's it's a it's a cheap education, I think, to rent first before you yes. buy. Well said. And and you the renting doesn't stop you buying either, does it? I mean you could you could Not buy an invest you could buy an investment property and you could spend a lot of your life renting different places around Portugal and enjoying that mobile lifestyle. So it doesn't you don't have to do one or the other, you could do both, but in a slightly different way. And that's what I want to ask you about investment. And where hmm. you think the world's going in this next little while. But first of all, what's your beef with beef Bitcoin there, David? Uh, well, Carl, if, if I told, <laughs> told you that probably 90% of the, the severe criminality I, I get to investigate ends up with them hiding their money in Bitcoin, yeah. uh, it suggests to me that probably 90% of, of Bitcoins are uh, from illegal proceeds or stolen proceeds. and over time, the regulator will have to simply um, regulate to the point of they need to know who owns it and what what that entails. Which goes against the whole beauty of Bitcoin. Well, it does. Yeah, it yeah. I mean, yeah. people, right? So, okay, yeah. and that's not Bitcoin's fault then. That, this is just bad people exploiting another great idea, presumably like it, the internet. It's, or... it's a wonderful way. I mean, you steal the money, you buy Bitcoin, and you've got an, an envelope in the garden somewhere with your Bitcoin uh, wallet or blockchain address. Mm -hmm. And what money, Your Honor? I haven't got any money. Oh, okay, well, you know, you're, you're bankrupt. Pay back, you know, pay back $20,000, and that's it. You know, suspended sentence for the next five years. Three years later, the guy's got $20 million in a nice big mansion in uh, Jumeirah Beach in, in, in Dubai, living the life of luxury. Yeah, I'm guessing a crusty old lawyer is not It's not going to make much sense when they see a, a blockchain address on, written on, hastily written on a scrap of paper. <laughs> so I understand. I understand the point you're making. So uh, uh, in, in, in the bigger scheme of things, you mentioned the uh, 2008 crash, I think, or the subprime yep. um, scandal. Um, yep. We, they say that history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. And the cycles of uh, financial history are pointing to some spicy times at the moment. And like, you know, like I've heard someone say the other day, we know what's going to happen. We just don't know when. Um, what do you say about this, the, the financial picture for the world at the moment and, and the um, instability in finance as a man who knows about these things? Oh, oh, boy. OK, well, you mentioned earlier the 1755 earthquake in Lisboa. And uh, yeah, I mean, that was south as far north as, 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 as Galway when I was up there recently over the summer. So, really? um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, I lived in Japan five years in Tokyo. I used uh -huh. to, my, my office window looked out over the, the moat of the Imperial Palace, which was waterfront 400 years ago. And then it's all reclaimed land, and all the banks, all the securities companies, insurance companies in Japan are based on reclaimed land. Um, I left Japan in 1993. That was 70 years after the big earthquake in uh, 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 1923 that wiped out Tokyo. And it happens regular as clockwork every 70 years. Well, so it was due in 1993 and it still hasn't come. 
And earthquakes, they kind of, they kind of, it's like clockwork getting tighter and tighter. And when it snaps, it snaps. Yeah. I've always said, uh, if the great Kanto earthquake hits Tokyo and wipes out most of the financial system there, the Japanese have spread their risk around the world. So you're going to have every bank, every reinsurance company, every uh, securities company, investment company is going to be very adversely affected. So right. a subprime crisis initiated in the US, which, of course, everyone was buying into. You had yeah. all these land banks in Germany buying oodles and oodles of exploding bombs with, you know, trickle down real estate issues. Go to your local plumber in B&Q and he'll tell you, oh, property pricing go down as well as up. Mm-hmm. Well, the bright lads of Wall Street seem to have forgot that 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 uh, simple edict and uh, we all paid the consequences. Yeah. So you now got political instability. You got this Russia, China, Iran, North Korea block. Yeah. Changing, changing how the Western world operates. You got geographical factors like global warming, and uh, then you got you know, be it an asteroid or an earthquake or something. So we live in in difficult times, which is why I go and drink sherry one week every month. <laughs> <laughs> David, is that your is that what you've got for us? Uh, we, no, live in, no, no. we live in we live in challenging and um, tightly wound times. Hit the solution is to go and drink sherry once a month and you're there. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, well, no. In, in 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 seriousness, and I think you you got a, a decent coastline in Portugal. So uh, you know, global warming is an issue with water here. That's that's for sure. But the lifestyle here is pretty good. Investing, uh, I'd say, real estate is is a good investment. Yeah. It's, I've always done well by it, and you know, uh, this this time round was 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 a, a, a bit of a mess, but I'm fixing it, cleaning it up. Uh, and you know, simple laws, you know, if you buy a, you know, people need always need property, buy a house and uh, live in it, or buy an investment property and make make sure it's close by. You can keep a handle on it and manage it and whatever. So bricks and mortar is always good. Yeah, um, yeah the basics, uh, you know, renewable energy. Food, water, especially water. Water. This century will be what oil was the last century. Interesting. You know, yeah. I mean, half of more than and most of Portugal's rivers are flowing from Spain. If Spain starts to, you know, feel its drought starts to dam or restrict flow of, of rivers coming into Portugal, big problems for agriculture here. So mm. you know, water is you know this this century's oil. Um, yeah, in a sense, you know, basics. As yes. I said, Bitcoin is the criminal's uh, plaything and criminal's toy. So I don't know how long that'll last. But, you know, you know fruit and vegetables, healthy stuff, uh, real, lifestyle. Real, real things, real life. Yeah, yeah. Pointing towards. And then we're blessed with that here, aren't we? I think we haven't lost touch with real life here in Portugal. Oh, um, I love it. For better or for worse, you know, you know, part, all the problems we're talking about are sort of part of how it's part of human nature, isn't it? A lot of the problems you describe are what go on in a very human well, system. They, they, these yeah. are aspects of humanity, aren't they? They're not. They're, they're yeah. not all. They can't all be laid at the the feet of the financial institutions and the banks. This, this is what human beings get up to in their relationships. And in a way, that's kind of reassuring, isn't it? That we live in a country where it is still very human. So it sounds to me, despite all the 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 challenges that you unearth and deal with on a daily basis, you're still you still have this country down as a good place to be. Oh, totally, totally. I I love it here. I really yeah. do. Okay. Well, I'm really glad we 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 heard that because you know, the, and and it's right, isn't it? To you know, we I, I guess um, we live in a time when it was very binary and polar. Is it good? Is it bad? And we're taking a slightly more um, mature view here, aren't we? There are. Let's be honest about the pitfalls. But let's also remember that it has a lot going for it as well. And I think, as you just said there, uh, you love it. I love it as well. And 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 the complaints we've heard here, you know, although Louise was uh, seriously questioning whether she lives here or not, you got Darren saying he's made the necessary adjustments. Still loves being here. Goes to the beach. That's his version of going off to drink sherry. I think he pops to the beach. So David, I hope you'll come back um, from time to time to the Happy good morning. To. Happy to. It's, it's been a great great fun ch- <laughs> chatting with you this morning in a funny kind of way. Um, be- People, if I put the link to um, Algarve um, real estate problems and deceptions, the thing we didn't get round to this morning, David, was the nickname the Algarve has got as a result of all these shenanigans. What do they call it down there? Algrab. 
Al Grab. So if you want to avoid the pitfalls of, of the Al Grab phenom phenomenon, um, go to this Facebook group here and you can join up. I've just done that myself this morning without having to go through too rigorous a procedure to, to get on board. So, David, muito prazer, muito obrigado, and uh, até a próxima. Muito obrigado. Okay, ciao, ciao, see you. Bye for now. Thank you so much. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. There he goes. And uh, there is the uh, Facebook group there. Let's have a quick uh, scroll over that. Paul Reese aforementioned um, there, uh, introducing a post with not a scam, but something to be aware of when buying a property where even a small part of it is classified as commercial. So uh, lots of practical advice, uh, it would appear, uh, over there at Algarve Real Estate. Problems and deceptions. Check it out for yourself. And the link for doing so is in the chat right here.